Hello! In section 2, we're gonna learn how we can describe or correlate transformation at Intel server using a matrix operation. So last time we learned about matrix operation where you can multiply a matrix ABCD to a vector, let's say V1 and V2. Right, and but, but we didn't actually say much about why we do it that way. And here we're gonna we're gonna see how we can think of you know, the result of this multiplication as a transformation. <laughs> so uh, let's start from what we have here. Uh, last time which is the dilation. And last time, like if, if, if all we have is just a, a vector, if you have a vector x and y, if you want to multiply them to make a new vector, then you can only multiply by a, a single vector. This here k. And the result would be k times x and k times y. So both x and y, like both coordinates in this vector, needs to be multiplied by the same constant k. But now, when we have a matrix, then this dilation has a more fancy way to to scale. Right now, we can scale each of the the axes independently. So we can we can scale the x-axis or the horizontal axis by the factor of k and scale the y-axis or the second coordinate by the factor of y. And that scaling is what we thought of as uh, the result on the right, k times x and l times y. Uh, we, we, we couldn't accomplish this using just a vector, but as a matrix, we can accomplish this by multiplying this matrix to a vector. We multiply this vectrix to a vector. And notice that we have k and l as the components that we need. And then we have two zeros. And if, if you if you learn about this enough, you will see that lots of them have um, zeros in the diagonal because that, that means something useful. And in this case, if you have zero, it means you kind of like ignore the outer vector. And <clears throat> only multiply each of the number by its factor. So that's a relation. Right, and do we have a min a mesh? Oh I don't. I should have one. So that means if, if you have if you start with let's say this box of length one or oh, in this case it's just a vector um one zero and zero one to make a box. Then after the transformation, after we multiply everything on the plane by this matrix, then the result is a dilation where in the x coordinate this becomes k, and the horizontal line becomes a line or a vector of length k, and the vertical one becomes a line of length l. And together we, oh, I should also make the the, the inner. And then the result is a, a new rectangle with different side lengths. Okay, that's simple enough. And also, if one of if if one of the numbers happen to be negative, then you simply make a you know make a negative vector. Like for instance, if k is negative, let's say if k is less than zero, then the result would be this vector where it is flipped on the x coordinate on the x-axis, okay, so that's become the, the point minus k. It's still the line of length k, but it's goes in the opposite direction. And maybe this L, for instance. Okay, and the new transformation is this rectangle, which is flipped on the x, which is flipped on the x-coordinate, but it is flipped across the y-axis. <coughs> Right, it's, 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 it goes from right to left. Yeah, but the way, if, if you think about this as a physical transformation, is that we, we move right, from this point across the y-axis. And we use the y-axis as kind of like the, the, the axis. Like one of the parts where you fix it. You fix it part, like this L vector, like in place, and you kind of like rotate. You think of it as rotating around. Like as you flip a book, like from the right to the left. This is the, the first transformation. Like once we have a matrix operation, then we can describe more transformations. 
Oh, and by the way, yeah, if if you just still have, if you still need to multiply them by the same number, uh, then of course you can use a matrix if you want to. But there's gonna be a matrix where both of the numbers are the same. Like that. So you can put k and k here, and the result would, would be the would still be the square because we dilate x value and y values by the same amount. <coughs> so that works as a special case of deceleration or scaling. Alright, that's the first one. Or maybe I should put a number somewhere. That's the first one. Then we have a re reflection. There's, um, oh yeah, I have a formula up, up down here. Right, reflection just mean reflection as you, you would have thought of you reflect something across a mirror. So on the left hand side we have a re reflection over the x-axis. So you, you, we have an object up up here like on the upper left corner and we reflect across the or over the x-axis. And so this is a mirror. If you put an object in, in front of the mirror, what you will see is an object across the, the axis. Uh, which is this um, A prime, B prime, Z prime. So that's uh, the reflection over one axis. And of course you can reflect over another axis if you want to. This is uh, a result. You can actually reflect that over any axis. Uh, because, oh, sorry, not axis, any line. Uh, because it's, it's just um, easy to compute if you use the X axis as a the reflection point or the reflection um, line, but in theory you can use any line. Uh, but just um, <coughs> you can use any any line, but uh, if you want to still um, describe it and in terms of matrix, the line needs to pass to the origin. So that one tiny requirement. So you can reflect on x axis or y axis, right? And the question is, how 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 do we compute that reflection? Do we have to do every point manually, or is there any magic formula that we can just apply once and get the result immediately? And the answer is, um, of course, there's a formula, right? Because if you, if you take a look at the left hand side, like what what it actually means when we reflect something over the x axis. Now it simply means that if whatever point you have, let's say this point A on the top left, and when you reflect that down here, and what you do is you still keep the x coordinate. So if if the point if A is at the point or the vector x y, right, the result still have the same x coordinate, but the y coordinate becomes negative. So in a sense, we want to we want to kind of multiply only one of the component, like only x or only y, by a negative number. So that's the reflection across the, uh, over the x-axis. And likewise, think about this point A. If it, it was x and y, then the result would be a point where the y coordinate is the same, and that's still the same height. You connect the line, oh, if you connect the line, the dot together with the line, but the x coordinate becomes flipped, so it changes from it changes from x to minus x. So in this case, it's from minus eight to eight. So again, this reflection is simply multiplying x by negative one. And how do we accomplish that? Uh, by these formulas. So if you over the x-axis, this means you, you flip from y to minus y. Right, and we can accomplish that by putting this, multiplying the, the vector by this matrix. So you, if you multiply that out, you get the result of x and minus y. <coughs> That's simple, right? And again, you, you, you can use the, you, you need to use the matrix vector multiplication to get the result. But this is what we, we have. And likewise, if you want to reflect over the y-axis, and then there this, uh, we have this result. So you flip x to minus x, and vice versa. 
and we can accomplish that by just put the minus sign on on the top left, upper left of this matrix. So these are uh, these two uh, reflections. Next we have rotation. This is uh, the 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 most difficult one, but the most useful or the most used one. Interestingly, so rotation works the same way we would expect the rotation to work. Uh, in this case, we have uh, we have an object. Uh, what do you call it? a Pac-Man or this light green shape or something? And then we have the point. And this is it, it, it is a point of um, rotation. Uh, but in theory, you um, you can use any point uh, to be the point of rotation. But for the sake of simplicity, for this matrix operation, we assume that for the we assume that we rotate around the origin. And there are ways to transform things back and forth. But for now, let's, let's assume that we use the origin to to fix and to rotate shape. And we have we have a point. We have we have a, an angle alpha. So you rotate every point here. Let's say you you have this point. If you rotate that line or that vector by alpha, you get a new point. Which is this point on the life, right, left, on this dark green shape? <coughs> oh, yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah. If you you rotate from this point P to the, the new point P, and this it is get it is a corner of this square, it gets rotated <coughs> somewhere else. <coughs> and one of the reasons why rotation is complicated complicated is because rotation depends on the point where you are at. So if you are at P, right, this way, this part, it is pretty far away from the center of rotation. So once you rotate that by uh, an angle alpha, you get pretty far away. Because you are for sure away in the first place. But if you start somewhere close to the angle, let's say this point, then once you rotate that by the same angle alpha, you only move by a tiny bit. And so we, you know, we have to, have to take into account of this fact. We can't just multiply something by the same number because that number would change depending on where you are on the plane. So that's the rotation. Is it too complicated? Um, yes and no. The, the thing is that Interestingly, like, even though the, the, the formula seems complex, right, if you remember last time we have x, y, and that becomes x cos theta minus y psi theta, x psi theta plus cos psi theta. And the, the formula looks very complex, but if you go back one step and ask what where that com formula comes from, it comes from this um, simply looking multiplication. So to rotate counterclockwise right, by some angle, right, that can be computed by applying this product. So on the right hand side, we still get the usual vector, V. But on the left hand side, we have a matrix, which doesn't look too bad, does it? Just need to know cosine and sine of that angle and put them in some order and make a positive and a negative part. <coughs> so that's the the rotation. Right, and there, there's a keyword that we need to be careful, which is the counterclockwise. Right, because if you rotate something, you know, if you think about it as a clock, then you should you you mostly or intuitively would rotate that object by and that object clockwise. And so you are moving ar ar along the clock. Right, but in math, like in math rotation is done counterclockwise at the default. Like counterclockwise is default. So you, if you rotate by an angle theta, oh, I should also change that to theta. But if you rotate that, right, we assume that we, you mean the counterclockwise rotation. So that counterclockwise, <coughs> and if what if it's clockwise? 
right? Then we can uh, we can accomplish that by replacing zeta by minus zeta. Because recall that if you if you rotate counterclockwise, right, by an angle with zeta, and this is the same as um, the angle minus zeta. <coughs> Just like numbers, you know, if you have a number on on a line, you have zero, one, minus one. Right, this line represents a number one. This line represents a number minus one, but the length of the line is still one. Similar to this thing here. Right, the, the angle that we see is still zeta, but it goes into the opposite direction of the original blue angle, zeta. And so we simply replace everything by minus zeta, and we still get a simply looking matrix. <laughs> okay, so that's how you um, apply the rotation. And let's take a look and let's see some examples of this is some actual examples of rotation. So, rotate the following vectors counterclockwise around the origin by 60 degrees. And yeah, they should, they should be moved, but sorry if you have OCD for this kind of image. I think I had here at 3 at some point. So before we can do math, let's, let's see if we can at first write like, what is going on here. So, the first vector is 2, 1. 2, 1 is something like that. That's the, that's the vector 2, 1. If you want to rotate that vector by 60 degrees around the origin, right then that means you you rotate that by 60 degrees. So this is a new vector. And the question is, what are the values? <coughs> if you rotate that, by 60 degrees. That's A. <coughs> For B, similarly, we, we have this weird number, which we will use in a moment why we have, we need to make it weird in the first place. Like this weird looking number is uh, this vector, 2 square root of 3 and 2. And the, the question asks you to rotate that counterclockwise by 60 degrees. I, if you don't know the math, then it's hard to see, but we actually end up with a vector that is on the y-axis. Well, let's make it that way one. And again, then the question is, what is the coordinate of this new vector after the rotation? <coughs> so there are two ways, or at least two ways to accomplish that. First, you can use geometry. Like on the left hand side, you can see that we have we have a nice and we, we have a nice triangle. We have, we have a nice a, a equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. And so you can do some math right, to determine the the position of this point and thus the result of this vector. Like for instance, if this this, this line has length two, then this is one. And if this angle is 60 degrees, then we have this as 2. This hypotenuse has length 2. Oh, that should be the right angle. This one, like the base is has length 1. The hypotenuse has length 2. The height has length, has length 3. Or oh, sorry, of 3. And based on that, you can see that the coordinate of this pi should be 1 and square of 3. So that's one way you can rotate that. But the problem is that you can have to do this manually for every single possible vector. And that's not going to be fast. <laughs> no, that's going to take some time. So what we are going to do here is, okay, we, we learned that right, this rotation can be described as this uh, product. So we have this point to zero. We rotate counterclockwise by 60 degrees. So the result is this vector times this matrix, which is cosine 60. I think it's wrong. Oh, that's sorry. Cosine 60, minus sine 60, sine 60, and cosine 60. You, you, we don't have to know about, you know, triangles. As long as we know how to compute these trigonometry functions, 
and know how we can multiply a matrix to a vector, then you can get the result you need. So the first thing might be to get the matrix first, right, because there are lots of formulas. And you, if you compute each entry of this matrix, you should get cosine of 60 degree is one half, size is mass, size square root of 3 over 2, and then we have a minus from the formula. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's, there's a single minus on the other side, which makes sense. I'm I'm gonna explain why we have that. And then this um psi square root of three over two, and then cosine is one half. <coughs> okay, so we can find that by multiply this matrix to this vector, <coughs> and then just multiply. You can use the, the usual where you multiply, which is to think of it as a row and column. That's one way, but you are welcome to if that is what you are used to. Right, but what I want to, to use here is the, the other one, which is when you split. When you split this into two numbers, the top and the, bot and the bottom. And then we take the first column, multiply that to the top, and add the second, and multiply that to the second. Oh, sorry. We use the, the bottom number, multiply that to the second column. So that's the result. And one other, one other thing here is that you can see this is zero, so it should be gone. And we are left with just this one single um, vector, which is 2 times 1 half, and 2 times square root of 3 over 2. And the result is, indeed, 1 and square root of 3. So this is how you compute the transformation of a vector by an angle. And the product here is going to give you the, a new vector. <coughs> and you can see that that agrees with what we did manually on the left hand side. So that's the first one. Oh, I should actually have an image down here. For the second one, like we just if we the same thing. And one other thing about this is if you well, if you rotate everything by the same angle, then we can reuse we can reuse the same matrix. This is for A. So for B we can reuse the same matrix. And we, we just compute it with one over two minus square root of three over two, square root of three over two and one over two. Do you want to multiply that to um Square root of three and two. And now we do the math. Like as before, you are you are free to use any method you prefer. But if you haven't used any, then I suggest you try this one. Right, so I'll split it into the first column and the second column. Right, and and compute each of them separately before. We combine them <coughs> at the end with the 2. So 2 times square root of 3, you multiply that inside the vector, you get square root of 3. 2 times square root of 3, you multiply that, you get um, square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3. So that's the first vector. Then we have um, 2 times that, which is minus square root of 3. And 2 times 1 half is 1. And you just add this two up, then the result is 0 and 4. So that's the answer for B. Right, after rotate this vector counterclockwise by this degree, then we get this result. And you can see that agrees with what I just mentioned. That, oh, oh, you can see here. Like that, oh, if you rotate that vector by 60 degrees counterclockwise, the result should be on the y-axis. And on the y-axis means that the x component is zero. You don't, you don't move in the x component, you just move straight to the y component. <coughs> so this is, um, these are two examples of how you can compute the rotation of a vector. It, it, it takes some time to get the cosine psi. But in theory, you can, you know, use calculator or 
any kind of tools to help you. <clears throat> Alright, so that's a that's a single transformation. Just multiply a matrix to a vector. <clears throat> right, and it is two for what I just wrote up here. And we are not missing anything. And that there are some other transformations as well. I sh for example, we have sharing. This is a weird one. Like it, it, it looks, it looks like a rotation, but it's not. Right, what we do here is we we keep. In this case, we we keep the the y component. So the height still the same. The, the height is still the same, but we kind of like we fix the the beds. Right, but we move only the top. If, if you think of this as, you know, not a piece of paper, but some kind of chip that can be bended, then the result should be the, the green one. But okay, if this one is fixed or if it is only move just slightly, then this chip would be would be sheared or bent or whatever word you call it. Diagonalized, tilt. Okay, that's a that's a weird chip. And the sharing has a Again, even though it looks weird, it has a kind of simple explanation or a simple formula. So you, you can you can share in both the x direction and the y direction. So even even if you want to share in the y direction, then what you do is you fix one of the axes in the in the y along the y axis. Right, and then you think of it as a, a line and you move it up. And if every point has to follow the same, you know, the same <coughs> position to the line, then every other point will be shear in this form. And somewhat surprisingly, sharing has a simple formula right, where you have one, zero, one, and then you have just put a k, put any factor of sh any shear factor you want. In this case, if you put n a equals to two. Oh, that's hard to see. Um, let me zoom in. If you put k equals to two here, right, you move. <coughs> you just you still keep the same y coordinate, right? But the x value has changed by the amount of y. So it's like the, the higher you go, like the, the more the further you are from the from the original image. So that's a result of a shear by a factor of 2, by a factor of k. Oh yeah, and by the way, the formula is simply x plus k times y. So that's uh, the sharing. And if you want to move in the direction of y instead, you should put the, the value of k in the bottom left. You get 1, 0, k, 1. And if you actually do the math, then the result is this vector. So it's y x is still the same but the, the value of y changes depending on how far away from the x axis you are the further you are away then the the more shear or the more screw that you get so there's um sharing and as a as a side note like in general case there, there are more transformations <laughs> Like as long as you can you can express it in terms of a matrix multiplied by a vector, then there are transformations. Or there are linear transformations. But some of them are not common so they don't have a name. And you can put 2107 as a transformation matrix. And you can do something with that. But it gives you a weird shape and doesn't have a nice name, so we are we are not going to touch that. <clears throat> so, and that's the end of the second section.